So I wanted to make a quick little update video here on the truck. Uh, the Chevy 2500 used to be 6.5 turbo diesel. Now it's got a 7.4 454 gas in it. A um, couple things before I start it up. Uh, right now the exhaust pipe is cut after, uh, sorry, uh, before the catalytic converter. So it's going to be very loud. Uh, that is why it's going to be so loud when I start it up. But right now everything is um, actually working really well on it. I had a couple problems when I was driving it home from the shop. Um, the radiator cap that I had on it was leaking and there was radiator fluid pouring out everywhere. So I actually didn't make it home for a little while because I had to stop and get somebody to take me to a part store to get a new cap on it. Blah, blah, blah. You know, a couple little issues like that. Um, for the most part, like you guys saw in the other videos, um, all the electrical with the fuel system and, uh, you know, it's wired into the oil pressure switch with that relay right there. Um, and everything is working just like it should, just like it was during my test runs. I don't know if I included this in my, in my other videos, but... I put a return line in, the fuel line. So I have a main fuel line coming up right here. And then I put a T connection in it, brass fitting. And this is like a little adjustable valve. This is the return line. So basically this is the main infeed to the regulator. And it's just a T connection in the main line. And all that's doing is it's taking excess pressure which, you know, most of it is coming straight on through. This is just taking the extra pressure and feeding it back to the gas tank. Out of my gas tank, there's two ports in it. There's an out port and then a feedback port, which is, this, this is the feedback port. Um, I might've explained that in my other video, so I'm not gonna go super into detail with all that, which really there's not a whole lot to explain, but, uh, you know. Anyways, um, I'm trying to think if there's anything I need to really talk about before I get it started. If anybody has any questions on this swap, Please ask, I should be able to reply. If I don't know, I'll let you know that I don't know or I will uh, try to find out the answer for you. Um, that should be about it. There's really not a whole lot to go over that I haven't gone over on my other videos. Like I said, the truck is gonna be super loud right now. Um, and yeah, like I said, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need to talk about. Actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna close the hood real quick because I'm gonna drive it a little bit for y'all. Um, it is shifting a little bit hard right now. And once again, in my other videos, you've seen the uh, transmission controller computer that I've got right there. It's wired into the throttle position sensor on the carb and also the uh, you know transmission, obviously. see here yeah uh, I don't know how well you're gonna be able to pick up that sound but um, it's very loud I got the windows closed right now but the so oil pressure temperature voltage most of those gauges are working. The only thing that's not working is the tachometer on the left side down there. Uh, I'm not sure why it's not working because I do have the signal wire connected to the distributor, the coil and distributor. I'm not sure why it's not working. I'll have to look into that. But everything else is working. Now, I think, once again, I've explained in the other videos, but um, the temperature here and the temperature here, I have two separate signal wires in two separate locations. Also, the oil pressure here and the oil pressure here, I have two separate um, sensors in two separate locations on the engine. So I can monitor the temperature and the oil pressure in multiple different locations on the engine. So I, I just think it's kind of cool. You can monitor everything, you know, from different spots or whatever. But let's take this thing out for a little spin. And this, the transmission controller is really cool. It tells you what gear you're in, how fast you're going. It has the whole, the whole nine yards, temperature and everything for the transmission, so. Uh, we'll take this thing out for a spin real quick. I don't know how well this video is going to turn out with me holding the camera like this, but... Um, and 
like I said, the, uh, the transmission is shifting a little hard right now. It's got enough fluid, everything, you know, I thought everything was set right on the computer, but I think it needs to be adjusted a little bit. And I can tell my wife was driving because the seat's all forward. It does shift all the way up into fourth gear. Big bump in my driveway. I'm not sure how far I'm gonna go. I'm probably just gonna go down the road a little bit. I see another car I'm probably gonna throw my camera down <laughs> uh. Uh, I might turn around right here I'm not gonna go real far with this thing right now um, I'll go a little further understand full well this video is probably gonna be pretty ridiculous with me holding this camera I think I said that a second ago uh, it's gonna be bumpy I'm I'm my hands are moving all around you know I, I don't expect this to be some perfect video with me driving the truck and everything but hopefully you guys will just kind of bear with me and kind of understand that I'm just holding the camera you know just my phone with my hand but I just kind of want to get you guys, you know, let you guys have a little feel of, you know, what it's like to drive it for the first time. This is my, like, second time driving this thing in, like, three years. I I've been working on this thing for two or three years now. It's just been the most ridiculous, drug out, insane process. There's a car, so I'm just going to put my camera down or whatever, but uh, <clears throat> it's been worth it for sure. It's, it's definitely been worth it. Um, it's just an awesome truck. I love the 90s style truck like this. I did basically everything myself except for rebuilding the engine. I got a group of guys out in Lynchburg to rebuild it for me and they did an excellent job on it. I'm very happy with how every, with their customer service and everything. Um, it's just a fun truck. I mean, it, it's, it's big and it's just a fun truck to drive like I said it's been two or three years since this thing has actually ran and been put together the way it is I'm just all around very happy with it and right now it sounds like a old muscle car the 454 basically just splits into a Y after the exhaust manifolds and just it's cut open no catalytic converter no mufflers are connected right now so it's just super loud and mean sounding they put a a little bit more of a torquey cam in it and they had to uh, bore the cylinder walls by like uh, I think ten thousandths so it's got a little bit more power and this thing it just it just sounds like a beast turn around right here
like I said, I realized that was probably a pretty ridiculous uh, video just with me holding the camera like that. But it was fun. That's all there is to it for now I'll probably make another another update video or two later on at some point um, there's a few things here and there that I want to change and add on to and adjust and all that but um, uh, for right now I mean it's it's doing what it's supposed to it, you know it's everything is working just like I had hoped it would um, actually, I can see this radiator cap is still kind of leaking. That's really annoying. I'll have to get another one probably or figure out how to fix this one. I'm not real sure about that. I'll have to figure that out. But um, yeah, like I said, if, if anybody has any questions about it, I know there's not a lot of people doing these swaps. This is kind of a crazy, I mean, who would put a 454 into a, a 6.5 diesel Chevy truck? You know, that's just not something that people are really doing. Um, however... Uh, I don't regret it and everything just bolted right in you know it's a 4L 80E transmission it just bolted straight in the the engine bolted straight down into the truck the mounts and everything just everything just fit in here perfectly so if you happen to have the parts why not and for for every single power source that you need um you know, you're talking about a positive or a negative pretty much for, for every little component, you know, wiring and all that. It's just find a positive and a, wet and a negative. This is the old wire harness that's left over from the diesel. All this right here is bound up and tied up, and that's just left over from, from the diesel. And, you know, everything is, I mean, there's extra wires here if I need them, but I, I probably won't. But anyways, you know, I, I hate to ramble on for too long, but um, yeah, that's about it for now.